don't this know. This conference will now be recorded. All right. Good evening, everybody. We're going to call the meeting of March 11th, 2021 to order. Vin, take the roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Here. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Onlin. Here. Fisher. Here. Mayor Siciliano. Here. The notice requirement for the Open Public Meeting Act for this meeting has been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Azure Park Press Coaster, posted in Town Hall, and filed in the office of the municipal clerk on December 30, 2020. Uh, this is a workshop meeting, so anybody that's on from the public, please mute your phone until the public uh, comment portion. So, Vin, you want to go through the agenda here for us? Again, we're going to do the same thing, Chris. Um, everybody got the agenda. If there was questions, we certainly would answer it. Okay. Uh, Right, we don't need to go over each one. You see, we have our resolutions and we have two ordinances, I believe, right? Yeah, we have two ordinances for adoption. Um, everybody's aware that we did get some questions on ordinance 2353 yesterday, um, but we seem to have solved that. I, I'd I'd like to say, I thought Vinny did an excellent job of explaining yeah. ordinance. I was very impressed. He can be clerk somewhere. Even, our, yeah. even and I could be right twice a day. <laughs> Wine squirrel syndrome. All right. All right. So, what do we have tonight? D1. We have an executive order update, Ben. Yeah. Tom, this is the outdoor dining. Um, okay. uh, last April, Chris, you signed an executive order allowing the outdoor dining. So, I guess it was a recommendation from Ron Kirk right. to extend that now and make it from April 1st this year through December 31st. So we wanted to just throw that out there and see, have some discussion and see if what the concerns are, whether everybody was in favor of that again. We can do that. Okay. Anybody have any concerns or questions on that one? And all this is doing is allowing this uh, outdoor dining? <clears throat> yes. Right. Okay. I guess no one has any questions about that one. What do we got? D2. D2. Tom, these are all your items. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm bringing up uh, what I was asked at the last workshop meeting, so I have answers for them. Um, you want mm -hmm. me to look at their, their bus station from New Jersey Transit, and uh, we, we called them, and they said they're a little behind because of COVID-19 and a lot of employees being in and out of work but they do have it on their list and I hope to get to it soon. <laughs> okay. um, Matt Snuff Pond, after we did some research, we found out we're not the ones that own the property at that pond. Not yet. Correct, we don't own it. Yeah. Right, Yeah. the owners all own into the middle of the pond, the property owners. But the township doesn't have any um, any property into that pond as far as us paying to have it dredged. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So I, I think the suggestion was from uh, Greg Blash, the only way to, for us to get involved because it is there, we'd have to, they'd have to deed us an easement or something to the town and treat it almost as one of the detention basins mm -hmm. or something. I, I would, ch you know, Tom, check with Greg how to uh, skin the cat over there, but you're correct. We don't own any of it. Um, because those deeds, I mean, I've sold a few of those, go right 141 feet and that's the next of the pond instead of a 100 foot uh, lot. So, you know, if you can follow up with them on that, but we do want to do something for them over there because you get turnover, then you get people who aren't living there, then you get rentals and the mm -hmm. homeowners association they had way back in the 60s and 70s are not going to be able to keep up with. Well, all right, but if we're going to do it, um, what's the avenue we want to do? We would do it and then charge mm -hmm. them back to the homeowners on the pond? I don't know. I again, I would let's have a discussion with Greg. I thought he had an idea on it. Okay. And then we'll see how we can best handle that. If it doesn't cost too much, we can do it, or you can create a uh, an assessment yeah. district there. You know what I mean? Special assessment. Okay, I'll take care. Sound of that. good? All right, good. Uh, but you're right. Uh, Green Grove Road, an individual asked us if we would do a, a, a weight study on the road and maybe put a, a, a weight restriction on there. 
But when, when I talked to everybody about Green Grove Road, they, they really said the individual was really referring to the Amazon and Neptune, not the new Amazon that's in ocean, because where the new Amazon ocean is, there's a lot of roads over that way where they don't have to go down Green Grove Road. So I didn't know what you want to do at this point. It has nothing to do with Amazon in our town. Correct. All right. Yeah. So correct, Tom, you brought that up at the meeting. Um, and I think you're, I'm paraphrasing, but we didn't want to get too far ahead of the horse, meaning Amazon wasn't there yet. But I, my personal opinion, and if I'm not correct in what you said, I, I apologize, but I would say knowing that it's coming, and it is, yes, absolutely the Neptune one that they're concerned about, can we be proactive? I mean, let's make sure that that traffic isn't coming through ocean to get to places outside of ocean. Okay, I'm only the attorney, but I happen to live three houses from Green Grove Road, so I'm familiar yes, with do. Green Grove Road. Recognize that only half of that road is Ocean Township, the other half is Tinton Falls. They right. Split down the middle. So, and we're saying the new Amazon is going to be in Neptune. So, probably whatever you think you might want to do, you might want to discuss with Tinton Falls. And if there's going to be something, it should be joint, probably, because uh, we don't control half the road. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many, you know, trucks are going to where, I guess, where the where the driving range is now, right? That's the new Amazon? Right. Okay. So I think most vehicles, trucks going, uh, they can't travel. Can they be on, they can't be on the parkway, right? Yeah, they can. Up to 105. Yeah, at that point, they can. Oh, wait, Up to 105. That'll force them down Green Grove. Right, absolutely. It's not 102. They can't, they can't stay on to 102. They can stay on to 102. Got to get on to 105. Oh, okay. Well, not to 105. All right. So oh, then the bottom line is, I think most trucks are going to be getting on and off, uh, probably in Neptune, Asbury Avenue area, or, or something like that, and not necessarily going on Green Grove Road. They might, but I agreed. I, I I don't know. Listen, I. I Again, I'd rather get ahead of it. I mean, this person was complaining about trucks on that road prior to Amazon coming out. Um, I I won't swear that I asked Mike about it. I could be I, I may be wrong, but I know he brought it up previously because he lives on a place where trucks fly by and he's got a big bump and he wakes up in the middle of the night. That said, may I ask Tom, can, can you find out what the process is to do that? And then if we decide to do, then we can come back and decide whether or not we want to do it. Is that your point? What I would do first is have to contact um, the town next door and see if they're willing to do that and if they agree with what we want to do. And then I would get our engineers to do a study. And then if we want to take any type of action, we have to go to NJDOT. So what help me understand what the engineer has to do with preventing weight limit. Well, he wouldn't be preventing it. He would be doing a study and come up with answers as to what um, weight limit we can actually put on the road and then have send it to NJDOT for their review and their response to what we want to do. Let me ask it a different, I hear what you're saying, just, I'm sorry, once I get it, I get it. Okay. So we, we can't just say we don't want trucks on a road and engineer has to tell us that we can't have it? We, we can't, we can't stop travel on a road only if, if there's nothing, no restrictions on the road. But if we put a weight restriction on the road, then we we have some credibility to stop it. I see what you're saying. Okay, very good. I'm with you now. Thank you. That, I get hey, that. At, that, at that intersection there of Deal Road and Green Grove, there's a culvert that comes underneath there. Typically, when there's a culvert, there's a weight limit anyway. I would just, I don't know, I would ride up there and take a look and see if I, I, there might be a sign already up there. Just worth a look, that's all. Yeah, that's right. That, right, it comes right at the corner there. Oh, well, you know what? I could drive there right now. You could. <laughs> it's it's well, literally right. Recess, we want to report after recess. Okay. Might have to wait till tomorrow. And, and then I have to remember. Right. Before Tom loses his place, let him keep going. <laughs> Thank you. I have it written down today, see? Oh, anyway. Okay. <laughs> We're getting ready to tear down the red house over at the golf course. 
And the fire mm -hmm. district went to Greg today last and asked him if they could go into the house and, and do some drills before we rip it down. Um, they come, they have their insurance to do it and everything else. I didn't see an issue with it, but I wanted to make sure everybody's on board with it. Yeah, my only thing is um, we don't want them actually lighting it up. I think it's too close to a lot of uh, other things there, and there's some tall pine trees near them. I mean, to run in and out doing dark drills or things like that, I get what they, if they want to do that stuff. Yeah, they're not Mayor, going to set it on fire. Interject. Okay. Hey, Mayor, if I may interject. Yeah. It's all uh, like forcible entry, uh, uh, ventilation training, cutting holes in, in the roofs and whatever. Okay. So no right, good. fire involved at all. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know, there's pine trees and close buildings. So that's good. That's fine. Uh, we we couldn't get a burn permit from NJE uh, DEP if we wanted to. So you don't have to worry about that. If they use any probably we'd be fake smoke. Gotcha. If you do fake smoke, let's just alert the uh, neighbors when you're doing it. Uh, I have, yeah, this is one of masses, so I'd have to talk to the district too. Yeah, just a nixle to that area. But yeah, no problem. You guys, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. That's, that's all I have, Mayor. Good, well, Tom. Just... Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for following up on those items. We appreciate it. Hey, I got Anybody a quick from... question, Tom. So I see there's pot, you know, the potholes are starting to accumulate. What is the best mechanism for people in the town to tell you or to tell someone that they, you know, that there's potholes? Because I know it's like they call me, they call everybody else. What's the best we'll way? It, typically, um, what's his name? Mark, Mark will set something up on the uh, web page, pothole, um, you know, where you can call in or you can log in and just identify where the potholes are. Public Works can review them. And then they can put them on their work orders daily. That's what, and that's what we have been doing. Um, there you go. Is so it on the, I'm on the website now? Is it actually up already? I don't see it. No, we'll probably have to put it up. I did last year. Yeah, that was nice. I'll put it up. I'll get it up tomorrow. Speaking yeah, of potholes, yeah, we should have this too. I'm saying, speaking of potholes, that's probably a good segue into marijuana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Move. So I don't know if we want where where we want to discuss this or when, but I'm doing that. You want to yeah. do it now? Do it now, Marty. Okay. Well, no, I mean I, I've sent you uh, copies. You know that the new law went into effect. We have 180 days mm -hmm. to uh, decide what we want to do. Um, the the law is primarily, you know, as it relates to the township, is primarily about recreational marijuana. And uh, it sets forth the different type of establishments that uh, you can have. As when it comes to delivery uh, places, you can't control that. There are a lot of deliver in every town, but you know they have um, uh, you know wholesale, uh, cultivating, and retail, etc. And so you know it's the decisions up to you guys as to what you would want to see here, if anything, and if you decide you want it, you know, and you get a 2% uh, kicker in terms of a, like a tax that gets added and paid to the municipality. And if you decide you want it, you have to decide where you'd want to put whatever type of facility you determine. And, and you could certainly limit the number of facilities uh, if you wanted to do that, you know, either by putting a mileage restriction on or you know, one one place within every X amount of miles, or just say only one establishment of this type, one establishment of that. I just we just need to know what your thoughts are and what you'd like to see done, and almost you know you could mold it accordingly. Let me ask this question: um, You can deliver marijuana, but you can't deliver alcohol. <laughs> um. Apparently, it's in the ordinance, I believe, the statute rather, that there are deliveries so that if you are um, living in Ocean Township and there's no Ocean Township place and you're getting it from, you know, Amazon, Asbury, Amazon whatever, somebody, <laughs> somebody can deliver it. You can, uh, you know, ask them to control odors from the place. There's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of different 
things you can do, but uh, you can't prohibit people delivering into town. So if we do nothing, it supersedes the ordinances we already have in place. That's the ordinance that we have in place right now, the resolution or whatever it was, at this point is meaningless. It means nothing. Yeah, Everything that was done prior to the statute is meaningless. We're starting again. And if you do nothing, just to let you know, then it's basically the Wild West. Anybody can do anything anywhere. So you right. really need to, and within some reasons, but you really do need to do something to control it, uh, either by prohibition everywhere, every kind, or limiting it to this type of establishment and in these locations. So that's what you have to decide. Would now be the time we'd be able to say, well, we would do a medical only and designate an area for that? I don't think you well, can you do can start. Go ahead, Marge. I think you, if you do a medical only, it, it opens it up to recreate. I think you can't, at this point, you can't just say medical only. Is that correct? That was always, yeah, I don't know. That was always my question. Yeah, to be honest with you, I'd have to look at that. I know Chris did ask me that. I have, I'm have. i sitting here. I don't know if you can see it, but this is what I have. You know, it's like that thick. Uh, Mom, the, you can do it. I, I looked at it, but the bottom line is that the, the if you're doing medical only, it's hard for me to imagine anybody's going to open up now a medical only when they can have recreation, which would include medical. Right. So, you know, why would they want to limit? All right. Okay. I was just going to say, you have time, you have till August. I mean, between now and then, you can really uh, check that out and, and see for sure if you can or can't do that. That'll make a big difference on, you know, which way I would go. So. I just want to make sure while we have to August to finalize, I would say, and I'd have to look at this again, you know, we want to have a decision or should have a decision in the next 60 to 90 days so I that don't we want can get everything. Yeah, yeah, we I, can get everything in place. So I, I, know I want everybody to think about, you know, and if you know already, look, I know that some of you may know exactly what you want. And now, you know, you can discuss it. Some of you say, no matter what, I want nothing. You know, some of you may say, I want to allow everything everywhere. I don't know, but so if you do a prohibition, is it something you can overturn at any time? Is there a five-year moratorium on it? There's a five-year, yeah. There's a five-year period where I mean, certainly, I, I believe you can open up and, and allow more, but uh, I don't think you'd be prohibited from doing that. But I don't think you could limit further uh, for a period of five years. I know that if you if you do nothing, yeah. If you do nothing, then you have a five-year period where you can't do anything. No, no, understood. But if we have, a, if we say we'll continue our our prohibition for now, and next year if we decide, you know what, we're missing a boat here, we we'd like to open it up. We can kill that ordinance and open it up. Is that right? I believe that's correct. I'll check on it again, but I believe that would be correct. Okay. That's all the questions. Marty, in in essence, whatever ordinance we put into place, it's null and void. We start fresh. If we don't make a move, it's automatically the Wild West. They can go wherever. We could, if we wanted to, if we're for it, we could create a zone for it and we could limit it to one, ten, five. I mean, what's the the uh, the situation on that? The limitation. I I believe you can limit it whether it's by mileage and say you can only have one within the 10 mile radius and that would take up all of Route 35, you know, whatever, whether it's by mileage or you can just say only only one establishment and then there'll be a fight as to who gets that establishment. But the bottom, maybe we'll have an auction. But the uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, doing nothing really is not an alternative. We can't do nothing. Because I don't think anybody wants to see that. But the uh, other, the the other thing to you know, look, obviously we'll make a decision within sixty to ninety days. But the other thing to consider that if we did go uh, ten mile, whatever the mile radius to keep it to one or whatever the decision is, if we go that that route, um, not only do we get a two percent kicker, um, but there also is application fees that go along with it that are basically non-refundable. It's also another 
uh, revenue stream for the town. Just something to think about when you guys do your research and looking at what could potentially come back to the town, not only in the short term on the application process, but in the long term on the uh, tax revenue that would come towards the town. Just something for yeah, you to consider I, in the research. I would, I would say the 2% tax revenue is probably the big kicker because that is forever, you know, on, on any product sold, whereas the application fee is a one, you know, I guess a one-time shot uh, per per establishment. But um, well, to Marty, you get to, for example, if fifty people apply, that's fifty non-refundable deposits that come to the town. That's just, you know, that's obviously a quick money grab. Um, well, on the yeah. application process. My, and while I know you're using the number 50, you know, my guess would be if we have a limitation and somebody comes in and says, has anybody applied? And they say, we've had 20 applications. They say, okay. But yes, you're right. I mean, they, that could happen too. I, I don't know what the application fee is, but I really didn't look at that. But the, uh, the 2% is, I guess, a gift in theory that keeps on gift, giving, you know, as every town, you know, grabs for it, you know, and there are more places, there's going to be less revenue per establishment, I would guess, too. So, but that's for the council to decide. Okay. Well, I'll Thanks chime morning. in. Obviously, I was uh, against recreational and uh, medicinal, and you know, we obviously passed it, whatever it was, two years ago. Um, and one of the reasons some of you well, Chris and John mentioned, you know, proximity. You had to drive to Edison or wherever. So, you know, my thought, my my argument then and my argument now is still, look, you can either go to Eatontown or you can go to Neptune and get it. So from a medical perspective or a convenience perspective, and now I didn't even know about the delivery. So that's really shot out the window. Anybody can get it anywhere at this point. So, you know, look, I, I don't know. Could we use some money? Sure. But is the money worth the potential, you know, um, pitfalls, whether it be traffic, whether it be crime, whether it be whatever the case may be. Um, you know, so right now, you know, I'm still against it because any resident notion can still get it within miles. Um, so, and, and I don't see that that is the way we, excuse me, I don't, that I think overcomes the objection of having to have it in town. And then from a revenue perspective, Marty kind of said it, you know, once it starts getting diluted, you know, how much is it, how much are we going to make? Is it really worth it, the money? So that, that's my opinion at this point. But like Marty said, we got 180 days. Well, I said actually 60 to 90, but, right. uh, you know, to try to make a decision. 180 to get it. Yeah, and it may be once you pass it, even if it hasn't, you know, gotten the 45 days, that, that's enough. But I, I'd rather not risk that. The, um, you know, I mean, I have some inside dope, as I, you might say, because my uh, my cousin it, uh, was the assistant county counsel in Boulder, Colorado. So she has dealt with this issue and uh, she's now retired uh, because they made marijuana illegal. Uh, legal, so now she's a stone old. No, she's now retired. And, um, uh, but I mean, I can give you if you want what their experience has been. Uh, but you know we can talk about that at some other point if you'd like to or i'll tell you now i don't care okay can i just make a comment yep so the one thing i don't want to see and i talked to marty about this is i've been to, to denver colorado and all you see going down the road is weed 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 the whole way down and it actually looks horrendous it almost looks like vegas you know so I would say from a zoning and a planning standpoint, that looks horrendous. So you hit it somewhere, probably nobody would even know it was there and it probably wouldn't even be a big deal. But I just don't want Route 35, every one of those open shops to become a, a weed emporium. That's part one. My second comment is I've been to New Mexico where my brother lives. I actually went to a really, a fairly decent restaurant and right next door was a marijuana shop. You wouldn't even know it's there. It's called New Mexico Health. It's got a little green, you know, uh, cross on there. Windows are blacked out. And honestly, you wouldn't even know that business was doing business. 
So I think that there's a little bit of hype to this, but the truth is the people that want it are going to get it. And uh, I don't really see how it's going to affect anything. But I'd like to hear the other points for sure. Well, yeah. One of the things for my cousin, I think, you know, it is confirming what you said in terms of Boulder, you know, and they have a lot more places probably than uh, than you'd like to see. But she said, you know, the clientele that go there, people walk in and out, you know, it's like your next door neighbor, stuff like that. Uh, frankly, a lot of the people who, you know, the elements that you'd be concerned about aren't going to the legal marijuana places because they can get it cheaper from their dealer. So they, you know, sometimes don't even use that route because it's cheaper getting it a different way. And now a part of that has been decriminalized also. So, you know, they might, that might just encourage that. But I think your typical citizen who wants to get marijuana would rather get it legally at a legal place. So that's probably the large percentage of clientele. Uh, her experience has been, you know, it made a lot of money for Boulder brought a lot of money in. I know Colorado Springs, uh, I think it's Colorado Springs, was one of the towns that did not allow it. And I know when we looked at this last time, and I have no idea what they eventually did, but they felt they were losing out to the neighboring towns who were selling it. So you know, they, they were lamenting in part the lost revenue, but I'm not sure if they ever changed. Okay. Margie, what do you have? Hi, I think you're, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. I think there's a middle ground, you know, I like, I mean, if we can restrict it to, you know, one per, you know, one or two per township, you know, per, per mile or per 10 miles or whatever, I think there's a reasonable, you know, there's room to kind of test it out and see how it goes without really falling down, you know, you know, getting, getting too deep in it that we feel like we're, we're running into problems. We can test it out and see how it goes and then change it later. Is that correct? if it's not going well for whatever reason well, I, I think you i don't think you can make it less I, I don't think you can approve it and then say now we're taking it away we can we can okay, maybe start with one and then if it works we can go from there but if not then we can leave it at one i don't think there's going to be much harm in doing that considering that it's probably going to be a lot of places i i, I think doing nothing is not a a, an option or a good idea like you said I, I think i'd rather start with the low you know start low and go slow or don't go at all but start low and just see how it goes sort of a test run and, and then you have to decide which type of facility you're okay with retail wholesale uh cultivating uh, manufacturing I, I think there are six different types of facilities the delivery is one that um uh, you can't prohibit people from coming into your town and delivering. But, all right. Okay. I think what we'll do is, uh, well, when's our next meeting? The 24th? Um, 25th. 25th? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, between now and then, we'll research more. I, I mean, my thoughts are, I'd rather uh, keep the uh, prohibition in for now mm -hmm. until we figure out how we want to do it, what we would want if we want to do it. You know, it's just right now, because we have a gun door ahead to act, and if we're going to have to act that quickly, my thoughts to like pump the brakes. Let's uh, really look into it. And maybe you observe another town for a year. So we miss out, we miss out. Listen, we miss out a lot of things that some towns don't have. And to what Dave was saying, he doesn't want to look like a honky tonk. Well, we have pretty strict zoning regulations if you haven't heard from people who say, ah, Ocean Township, man. But there's a reason for that, Dave. It's so we don't have that honky tonk look that we don't want where, you know, eat at Joe's every five feet with the neon sign. Joe's is a good place, by the way, wherever it is. Yeah. But you hear my point is that's why mm -hmm. we're, we're a little picky here in Ocean because we have a higher standard, I feel. And so to me, I think, uh, you know, like Margie said, if we were to do it, we can always restrict it to one every five miles, which would knock out everybody but one. You know, we drew, you know, we're a three mile by three mile town. So that that would really eliminate that. But I think my first reaction would be to let's pump the brakes. Let's put a prohibition in there and an ordinance and revise it to uh, hold off for now. Let's see how it does. 
they're still changing the law on what they just passed, which you know had a lot of controversy unto itself. So I think until that gets straightened out and we get a tighter uh, restrictions there, and um, you know the notifications are more in line with what people would like to see as far as parental notification and and the such. That's my I, I, yeah. I think a lot of the issues that there's you know maybe still talking about is again how youth get treated, how uh, you know there, there's like you get three shots at the you know before anybody does anything you know like you said parental notification. I think that's probably more an issue than what where you're going to put places and, and, and how you deal I think with that. So. But, you, know, that's the chief, right. the, you guys yeah. on board with the idea or are you in a rush to seek to have them and see how it works? That's the question. I, Chris, I love that idea. Having said that, I'd still, I wouldn't, and I don't think you're saying they're mutually exclusive, but I think if we do do that, which I'm certainly in favor of, let's simultaneously make sure we're doing whatever research we need to, um, to, to make an educated decision. I, I mean, yeah, give right you now, more time to do it. Say that again. Right. It, it certainly does. And, uh, you know, I look, I like the idea. You know, we got local towns that are going to jump on this. There are a lot of towns that have tried it that have been successful with the medicinal, uh, and there are some that have not. So, you know, look, it's, I, I just don't think it's for ocean uh, for, for any number of reasons. But, it, you know, I don't want to restrict the ocean residents from getting it. And if they can get it in either town or have it delivered, I think we've accomplished it. I, I just don't know. The, the other thing, Chris, if I may, is is the numbers. Let, let's, I don't know how much time it would take to crunch numbers, um, but, and I don't know how we would project them based on, I don't know, what whatever historical information we could gather from whatever similar towns uh, in other states. So I, I don't know anything that we come up with as far as a projection, if it's, it's even going to be realistic. You mean numbers on uh, on what the town would get yeah. from right. revenue? Well, you figure, Rob, in a facility that sells the marijuana, not not uh, cultivating it. A, just a place that actually sells it can do anywhere between three and five million dollars in gross revenue sales. A cultivating place can do upwards of thirty million dollars. So you're looking at two percent of whatever the gross sales are. It's this, it's you know pretty easy math. To figure out and you know i'm looking at it from a standpoint am i rah rah let's go out you know smoke weed no but my feeling is i'd rather be on the train than being the caboose later on looking back and saying man we could really hit this thing early and marty to your point yeah things do get diluted over time but i haven't seen any liquor stores really go out of business nor have i seen liquor licenses get turned in very rarely do you see that happen. The only thing is, and Marty, you could probably find this out from your cousin, um, marijuana sales probably steadily increased over the time that they've actually increased the amount of marijuana facilities compared to what they started with in the beginning. If you look at some of the facilities here, uh, the one up in Woodbridge, and my son has a medical card, so I've been up there and I've done a little research on this. I know that, you know, I've asked a lot of the questions I know through his card and through those people up there and the numbers, um, because I have asked those numbers. I did ask about the um, application process and how does it work for the town and you know where is the money and yada, yada, yada. I, Rob, I agree with you. You're right. They can go over to Neptune. They can go to Asbury if they open one. There's one that just opened up in Eatontown. But ultimately, as you open up more facilities, more people are probably going to be doing it recreational-wise as opposed to trying to get a medical card and just probably more people are going to go opt to buy it legally. Like you said, you can buy it on the street cheaper, but at least you know what you're getting in a facility. And if you get the right facility in here and they're running the right business, then I don't think you have to make it look like Tobacco Row. When Chris and I went up to Woodbridge, you pull up, you don't even know you're at a marijuana facility. It was absolutely amazing. And the security that goes along with it as well. So just some things to look at. And Rob, I would probably suggest that maybe you go up to that Woodbridge facility and go take a tour of the place. They'll take a look at it. I mean, it's you know, it's simple. They'll they'll give you a tour. They don't care. And and and, and Marty may have made, and I'm I'm absolutely up to doing that. So, but if I understood Marty correctly, or I, I Margie might have mentioned it, if we only had so we 
you don't think we can just limit it to medicinal at this point? Well, I didn't say whether we could or couldn't. What I said was, I don't think, I think Margie said that you're, that you can no longer limit it if you allow medicinal and it, it then becomes regular. I have to look at that, but I yeah. think limiting it to medicinal would mean no one's going to want to come here because why would you open up a facility that's only going to provide for medicinal marijuana when, you know, the, the big money would be in recreation. So I, I don't think you're going to get a lot of people that will say, yeah, sure, we'll just limit it to medicinal. I think a lot of those facilities that are now medicinal will be converting, I would think, to both. But um, as far as asking my cousin uh, whether there was an increase in sales, hey, John, that's Boulder, Colorado. They already had 100%. When they 100%. <laughs> they had what, 100% what, increase? No, okay. 100% usually when they, started, when they opened up, you know, it was, uh, uh, that's a joke for the tape, anyway. Rob, you ready to go? <laughs> I'm in. All right. I don't know. Anybody else? I mean, you guys pretty much gave your opinions. You know, one thing I'd be curious to see is what the actual revenue is for these grow facilities versus the retail facilities. Because the retail facility is nothing but a pain in the neck, but yet you had some secure grow facility up in the middle of the uh, sand hills that was just a, a wholesale operation. I think it would be no different than, a, you know, a guy making moonshine. I mean, it's the same, you know, illegal liquor up there. It's just a, a business. A guy uh, selling produce. I mean, the revenue could be tremendous, you know, if that's something that's possible versus, you know, having a 7-Eleven where you can buy your weed at, you know? Was that on there? Let me add that it, there's two different uh, taxes that you can add. And I have to look again, but it's 2% and 1%. And the cultivation, I'm not sure if it was the cultivation or the uh, wholesale, but one of them was at 1%. And I'm not sure now, looking back, whether it was cultivating and or the wholesale of it. So I have to look through that again. I know that, you know, a lot of towns have already started uh, passing or, you know, uh, ordinances, you know, either restricting it or allowing it. And uh, so. Well, you know, look into if you can have the, like, uh, Dave's saying you can have just the cultivating where you don't have a retail sales kind of atmosphere there, and they're just like growing it, and Amazon shipping it out of here for them. That's something to look into, also. That's kind of clean that third, way. Third you, don't have, of Sears. you don't have the foot traffic. You don't have the uh, well, like Dave said, all the other nuisance headaches that go along. Potentially could go along with it. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing what those numbers would be. Hey, Marty, not to give you any more homework, but um, if you know of any of these towns, like, say, Neptune or Eaton Town, I'd be curious to see what they're, what they've put through at this point. I'd like to see what they've got. Well, I'm looking at a proposed one, actually, as we speak for Keyport, because, as you know, Matt is a councilman in Keyport. Uh, he, we're also now the attorneys in Freehold Borough, and, and apparently, uh, you know, I believe they're going to pass, pass something. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll get you other ones to look at. Yeah, idea. shoot us those things. I'd like to see what they've, uh, they're all putting in there. All right. Before I do that, I have to get the authority to make sure I can do that. Because I don't know. Right. I doubt it passed you. Okay. And it, does the grow facility add to our green footprint? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. It could count. Well, what happens if they, what, maybe the fire department could do their practicing at the grow facility <laughs> when they set fire? We'll see. All right, so I think we've got a little homework before the next meeting, and uh, we'll take it from there. How's that? Everybody good with that? Works for me. Okay. All right. Anybody else have anything before we go to closed? Is there anybody in the public tuned in, Ben? No, no? Chris, nothing. So how do we go to close from here? Yeah, we Are just you? stay on it. I'll just stop the recording when we're ready. And um, I have the resolution here, so if you want, I'll read it, and then I'll stop the recording, and we'll go into close. We'll just ask Tom Rue to excuse oh, himself well. and come back.
All right. Before we go to close, anybody else have anything that you want to bring up for the public? No. Okay. One quick thing, Chris. I, Tom, I never sent you the email. We had. Um, I've been receiving complaints, uh, and I did talk to Ron. So, Ron, Tom, I don't know if Ron brought it up to you. I caught him in the hall the other day. Um, but there are deliveries that are taking place at um, Pliable and um, Dollar General after hours. And the residents have been complaining. They've been calling the police. The police have, according to them, said that the noise ordinance doesn't apply to deliveries. I, I don't know that that's accurate or not. Ron said he was, it, Ron seemed to think that that's not accurate, that it certainly does. But um, it, every time there's a new driver, every time there's something else happening, they'll come in and they'll They'll park it there, they'll stay there overnight, or they'll make deliveries at 10, 11, 12, 1 in the morning. So the residents are getting tired um, and they shouldn't be doing it. So if we can just, Tom, if you can follow up with Ron, if you don't mind, I know he said he was going to do something. And obviously he's got the zoning board today and he's probably been busy for the last couple of days with that. But um, the residents are getting a little tired of it. it, it hap it's happening more frequently than it had in the past. Okay, I'll take I, I will definitely uh, look into it for you. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, Ben. You get ready for the resolution. Whereas section eight of the open public meeting acts permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of certain circumstances, and whereas the public body is in the opinion that we have such circumstances, now therefore be it resolved, the public should be excluded from the discussion and action taken upon this uh, specified subject. The subject matters are litigation, various matters, personnel, various departments, and litigation, various properties. We need a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Recorded. All right, let's call the meeting of March 11th, 2021 to order. Ben, take the roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Here. Council Member Zachera. Here. Onlin. Fisher. Here. Mayor Sosliano. Here. Everybody, please rise for a pledge of allegiance. There's a flag over Rob's shoulder there, and then remain standing for a moment of silent prayer thereafter. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, liberty, and justice. Thank you. The notice requirement for the Open Public Meeting Act for this meeting has been satisfied. A copy of the annual notice was sent to the Azure Park Press, coaster, posted in town hall, and filed in the office for the municipal clerk on December 30, 2020. We're gonna forego the fire exit proceedings. It is a, uh, a go-to meeting meeting. So I ask folks at home to please mute yourself until we have the public comments portion. There'll be two opportunities, one during resolutions, you can comment on those, and then one at the end of the meeting to make any comment you made to Ocean Township. Uh, in the meantime, before we go any further, I'm gonna ask, um, any of the council members start with council member chair if you have anything to offer for the public or any new information yes the uh chamber of commerce is uh decided that during covid that we were able to find some money and offer scholarships this year so we will have uh, applications went out today to ocean township uh, guidance counselor we'll get them out to a couple of other folks uh everything is online this year no paperwork uh, you just fill it out um, and I will, I forgot to get the link. So if you uh, would share with me, Mr. Mayor, after the other reports are done, I'll pull up the link and uh, share it with everybody. Good, good news. That's good stuff, Ron. Good to hear. Anything else? Uh, what do we have, March? You're on mute, March. March, we can't can. read you. You can't unmute yourself? She is unmuted, but for some reason we're not we're not hearing her. I'm sure everything's good in your world, and uh, you wish us all well. Best wishes and good luck, right? <laughs> You're gonna vote by thumb tonight, all right? Okay. Dave, you have anything? No report. No report tonight. Johnny. 
They'll report. Okay. I'll just mention that we're still working on a uh, vaccine for our seniors, and pretty soon we'll have a portal for Ocean Township residents, seniors to go log on to. And we're looking to get up to 500 vaccinations here shortly. So as soon as I put that all together, I will post something and we'll all be able to put it out there. All the council members will have the info. We can share it with the public and get our seniors vaccinated as many as possible. Um, also, I want to mention there is going to be a Zoom meeting for anybody that's interested on March 24th. We'll post that info on our website uh, for the reconstruction of the Corley's Avenue Bridge. And that'll be uh, public comments are going to be welcomed at this meeting for those folks that live there in around the bridge or travel Corley's into Allen Hurst Daily. You might want to log on to that. Marge, you might want to get the word out for folks and share that once you see it. Uh, you know, a new redesign of that old bridge will be probably a third time in 140 years they redesigned it. And underneath, if you take a kayak, I'm sure Margie's seen it, you can see the old rustic timbers and stuff that's under the old, you know, the first bridge is probably, some of it's still there. It's interesting. Anyway, so that'll be redesigned and straighten out that road a little bit and continue our bike lane uh, project as well. We'll have our pathway to the ocean there, another one. Okay, that being said, does anybody have anything from the public on our resolutions and or uh, that appear on the agenda? Any comments to, on those? Now would be the time to speak up just on the resolutions that appear on the agenda. Yeah. Somebody said yes? No? Okay. Welcome, Mayor. All right, so we have tonight the consent agenda and resolutions uh, 21047 through 2156. Someone please offer. Yeah. I'll offer. Second. 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 Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes. No vouchers tonight, right, Ben? Vouchers, so. Chris. Individual action, we have uh, 21051. Yeah. There is. There are, I don't have it. Okay. okay. What's the amount? $1,919,647.05. And we'll please offer the vouchers. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Members Achera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes. Good night. Resolution 21051. Authorized tax collector to place a lien on the following properties to abate a public health nuisance. All right. So block 25, lot 44, and block 25, 19, lot 14. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Members Achera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes, and so those are properties that we go and we have to maintain when the homeowners neglect them and then we charge them back. So that's what the lien's for. All right, 215252, authorize the purchase of two 2021 Dodge Durango all-wheel drive pursuit uh, pursuit vehicles from Bayer, oh, I'm sorry, Bayer of Morristown under the Cranford Police Cooperation System, identified 47 CPCPS. At a total cost not to exceed $60,132. Someone please offer. I will offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Members Achera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes. 2153 authorized the purchase of the following vehicles for the Department of Public Works. So we have a TVZ loader. Foley Cat Incorporated for 43,264. We have an F450 crew cab Mason Dump from Bear Ford for $80,337.40. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Members Achera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes, they've been waiting for these and they're sorely needed right now. Um, 2154, authorize a professional service contract with Leon Avakian to assist in the development, implementation, update, 
and maintenance of the uh, MS4 stormwater program at a cost not to exceed $8,500. Someone please offer. I'll offer. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Conlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes, 2155 authorizes the tax collector to issue refunds credits to those taxpayers who have received favorable state tax appeal judgments. Someone please offer. I'll offer. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociana. Yes. And tonight for adoption, we have two ordinances. Ordinance 2352. Ben, would you read the title, please? An ordinance amending ordinance number 2338 entitled An Ordinance Fixing Salaries and Compensation of Certain Offices, Positions, and Employees for the Township of Ocean. Great. Well, I'll please open a public hearing on ordinance 2352. I'll open the public hearing on ordinance uh, 2352. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociana. Yes. Anybody from the public have anything on ordinance 2352? State your name and address for the record, please. None, Mayor. Seeing or hearing no one, so I'll please close the public hearing on Ordinance 2352. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing on Ordinance 2352. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Members. Yes. Yeah. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. And Mayor Sociana. Yes. Action, please, on Ordinance 2352. I'll move to approve ordinance 2352 and publish according to law. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociana. Yes. That ordinance has uh, been approved. Tonight also we have ordinance 2353. So, uh, Vin, read the title, please. An ordinance authorizing the private sale of non-conforming real property known as Block 33.05, Lot 3, Dover Avenue. Dover Avenue, okay. Uh, someone please open the public hearing on Ordinance 2353. I'll open the public hearing on Ordinance 2353. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociana. Yes. Uh, anybody from the public have anything on Ordinance 2353? Now would be the time to state your name and address for the record. Oh, seeing and hearing no one. Someone please uh, close the public hearing on Ordinance 2353. Move to close the uh, public hearing on Ordinance 2353. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Conlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociana. Yes. Action, please, on Ordinance 2353. Move to adopt Ordinance 2353 and publish according to law. Second. I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. Yes. Council Member Zachera. Yes. Conlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociana. Yes. That ordinance has been approved as well. At this time, does anybody from the public have any questions or comments for the council? Now would be the time to state your name and address for the record. No, Vin? This is Scott Sharp. I have a couple of questions for you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, from last week's meeting, which I failed to be able to attend, uh, I just wanted to clarify for the master plan that you have, uh, that the support of that was through the no-bid contract to Mr. Higgins. Is that still correct? Yes. Okay. Just so you're aware, I uh, and and you did prob prob 
properly publish that, but I did notice that that's inconsistent, but it's kind of looking in the rearview mirror. Mr. Musillo gave me a totally different plan before you decided to fire him. So I went by what he had, but then I saw that you had decided to go with the no bid contract. So I understand that. Secondly, on the master plan, I saw that you plan a three person stakeholders or commission to, to, about, to advise the township planning board or guide the process. Do you, can you, will you publish a schedule for the release of information uh, with, for the master plan as it is developed by whoever the writers of that plan will be? Yeah, we could take you, the public through the gestation period as it occurs, no problem. So tomorrow's a uh, precursory meeting, and I will fill you in on what happens with that one. I think it's, I don't know who's on that one. Dave, are you on that one tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. It's kind of a subcommittee pre-meeting to organize our thoughts. So we'll actually uh, give a little summary on how that goes as well, just just so to keep how many, people, how many people will be attending that meeting? That's a Zoom. I think there's going to be, uh, let me see, three of us plus two, and probably six people at that one. All from planning board or the council? The board of professionals and council, correct. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm kind of confused from the standpoint of whether or not that meeting should be uh available uh, for other people to listen in on i think that's a public meeting with that number of attendees but well it's not going to violate the sunshine law there's only going to be two council members so we're not going to have to publicize okay. that meeting I'll, I'll go verify that that's that's on okay. me that's uh fine. will will this group publish the uh i guess a outline or a listing of the elements to be included in the master plan as as i'm sure you and your cohorts there are well aware there are required sections which include objectives assumptions all the social you know land use all these mm -hmm. mandatory sections which must be in the master plan i assume are you going to release some form of an outline of what that document will include yep as soon as we get it what's the That's timeline what on that you had no, you should I think most professional groups they usually run to a schedule my engineering yeah. background we always had a schedule and what were the events uh that's how you determine whether or not your your uh, planner mr higgins is going to he has due dates that when are the, what are the dates that you're going to do this? Because the way this process, lots of times I'm afraid may work, will be you'll go through uh, 12 months and then say, oh, we got behind, but here's a document. And uh -huh. it's it's last minute. Yeah, we're this looking to have this. doesn't get updated for 10 years. Right. So I'll better answer that tomorrow, but, I'll say this, and Tom Henshaw knows this, our objective is to have this um, new master plan in place, vetted out by the public, everybody's seen it, knows what the components are, and voted on before 2021 is over. I'm sure that is, that is the plan. The, the question that I would have is whether and how this group will indeed uh, ensure that that you're that you've encompassed all elements of the township into this document and where i'm really coming from there is who's 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 got the responsibility to ensure uh like on the circulation for transportation that you all have properly addressed the aspects of all socioeconomic racial ethnic elements of the town and is not just narrowly looking at a subsection that's convenient for the group that's being convened. I, I'm, I'm looking for the diversity on this group and I, 
I have not seen that diversity. I'll be frank with you. The three okay. the three people that you listed last week or two weeks ago, I didn't see any diversity there, quite frankly. So I'm just well, asking, challenging you to say, how will you ensure that you have the diverse inputs from across the township? Well, don't let the glasses fool you. There's diversity in thought, not just in looks or appearance. So, uh, you know, there's going to be a clerk of the works to oversee that every aspect of the master plan is fully carried out and uh, everything's done the way it's supposed to be done. So, you know, you just have to trust yeah. me for now until you see yeah, yeah. action. That's, what I, that's, that's what I just heard is trust me. And uh, yeah, you don't have to trust important me. Important document like this it. should have more than trust. It should be trust with verification every step of the way. So just well, we uh, hope you know, you stand up to your scrutiny as we go along and you'll you'll sure you'll let us know if we're not doing that. As long as there's adequate feedback, that's absolutely true. Okay. And transparency. That's what we're all about. Okay. That's all I have. Great. Thank you, Scott. Anybody else? Ben? Nothing now. Okay. All right. We know what our task are for the week, fellas and ladies. Um, let's all have a good weekend here and make it count. We're going to make a motion to close. Somebody second? I'll second. Deputy Mayor Napolitani. County. Yes. Council members of Chera. Can I just go back to the uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, scholarship? Uh, people yeah. can go right to the uh, Chamber of Commerce page, uh, www.gotc.org. It's right on the home page. You can fill out the application there. It's for Ocean Township seniors or any senior of a Chamber mm -hmm. of Commerce member. Uh, so you can apply that way. Thank you and yes. Council Member Donlin. Fisher. Yes. Mayor Sociano. Yes, meetings adjourned. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.